Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kat and today I am so, so, so excited to do my August TBR. So I have been planning this for quite a while. I A lot of these are library books which I requested over a month ago um, and they came because Australia keeps doing lockdown so it took a while for them to get here but they're here and I'm so excited. And yeah, so every single book that I talk about today I really want to get to. Uh, yeah, so without further ado, let's get into my August TBR. So the first part I want to talk about is Invisible Cities. So the two countries for Invisible Cities are Nigeria and South Korea. So for Nigeria, I'm going to read Pet by Akweke Amezi. So I have tried to read Amezi before, wasn't a fan of Freshwater, but I've heard nothing but good things about Pet, who is um, a main character, a trans girl who lives in a city where all the monsters have been slain and put away, except one day she realizes that may not be the case and she has to go and hunt down a monster. Uh, so I'm really excited to get to this. Um, Akweke is non-binary and from Nigeria, so that fits for the Nigeria prompt for Invisible Cities. And for South Korea, I am going to read an arc I have from NetGalley called Lemon by Kwon Yo Sun, translated by Janet Hong. Uh, so this is about a young girl whose older sister was murdered in high school. Two boys were suspected, but no evidence was ever found against them. The case goes cold. Um, until 17 years later, when the sister decides she's going to set out on her own to discover what really happened and things take a very dark turn. Um, I'm very interested by that premise. Also, I love the cover and this is South Korean translated by a woman. So the next category kind of of the month is women in translation um, split into two, translated by women, translated by men. So. If you don't know, August is Women in Translation Month, so I'm really focusing on women in translation. I think that is just something awesome to do. So obviously, Lemon counts for Women in Translation and translated by a woman. Um, and then next up, I have The Antarctica of Love by Sarah Stridsberg, translated by Deborah Bragan Turner. Uh, so this is Swedish literature, and this sounds a lot like Lovely Bones, but as an adult. So it says, um, they say you die three times. The first time for me was when my heart stopped beating under his hands by the lake. The second was when what was left of me was lowered into the ground in front of Ivan and Raksha at Solna Church. The third time will be the last occasion my name is spoken on earth. So this is a ghost who is trying to oversee the people who are trying to find her murderer. Um, and I think it just sounds really fascinating. Uh, next up, I want to read Hybrid Child by Mariko O'Hara, translated by Jody Beck. Uh, this one has been on my shelf for a very long time. Uh, this is sci-fi and it's um, artificial intelligence where there's an AI controlled house where a rogue cyborg takes refuge. Uh, the cyborg eats the dead girl buried under the house and takes her form. Um, and then far away on another planet, the female AI system that governs the society becomes insane. Um, and that's just like a little bit of what's happening. So I know that this doesn't have super high ratings, but I'm really intrigued and I'm gonna read it no matter what. So yeah, cannot wait to get to this one. Um, after that, I want to pick up The Forest of Hours by Kirsten Ekman, who is, yep, a Swedish writer. So we have quite a lot of Swedish and Japanese, which I'm not surprised. I really like translations from those countries. This one is following Scord, an engaging and mischievous magical being who finds himself alone in a woodland with no memory, no past, and no language. So this follows Scord over 500 years as the woods and industrialization reshape the land that Scord knows. Um, I think it sounds really interesting and bizarre, and I've never heard anyone talk about it, so it has my interest. Um, after that, I want to pick up this lovely library book. 
I just can't get over it. The cover is so stunning. So this is The Dangers of Smoking in Bed by Mariana Enriquez, and it is translated by uh, Megan McDowell. So this is an Argentinian writer, and this was translated from Spanish. This is a series of, series of short stories um, that are murderous, morbid, and contemporary gothic set in Argentina. Tales of revenge, witchcraft, fetishes, disappearances, and urban madness. Yeah, I'm down. I'm down. Like, this is like one of my top anticipated of the year. I cannot wait to get to this one. Um, okay, and then after that, I have Fever Dream by Samantha Shrevelin, who is also an Argentinian writer. And this was translated by... Megan McDowell and Ruth Sepp. Oh, so Megan McDowell translated, had some translation in both of these. Um, yes, I mistakenly did not pick this up when I saw it at a thrift store a while ago, and it's been on my mind ever since because I think Samantha Shrevelin writes really weird stuff, and of course I love that, but this has major like horse energy on the cover, but not in the synopsis. So this is about uh, somebody who wakes up in the hospital and there is a young boy sitting next to her and she's not his mother and he's not her son and I think things get weird and dark and I just want to know why there's a horse on the cover. Like, this book has intrigued me for so long because I'm not a horse girl, but the horse energy is intriguing. Um, and then after that, um, I have the Q which I got a long time ago, um, and it's by Basma Abdel Aziz, who is an Egyptian writer, um, and this is translated from Arabic. I haven't heard anyone talk about this, but I'm trying to expand the countries that I've read from other than, basically it's like South Africa and Nigeria in the continent of Africa, uh, so I really like to expand, and this one has poor ratings, but it sounds really interesting. So it says, set against the backdrop of a failed political uprising, the Q is a chilling debut that evokes Orwellian dystopia, Kafkaesque surrealism, and a very real vision of life after the Arab Spring. So I want to dip my toes into it and see if I like it, um, and see if I can find a new female author from a country that is outside of South Africa or Nigeria. And then the last one, that's Women in Translation, translated by women, uh, is Consent, a memoir by Vanessa Springora, translated by Natasha Lair. Uh, and this was recommended to me by Olivia, or Avi, um, and she has a booktube channel. I will leave it linked down below, but she said that this was great. Um, and this is kind of a Me Too memoir where the author is 40 years old now, but she is recounting her childhood being groomed, I think, by a much older man, and it has become really popular in France, and it has super high ratings. It has 4.3 out of, like, over 8,000 ratings. So I'm really interested to get to this one as well. It comes highly recommended. Um, and then I have two more women in translation, but they're translated by men, but, like, I really, really want to read them. So this is Lonely Castle in the Mirror by Mizuki Tsujimura, and it's translated by Philip Gabriel. So this is about seven teenagers who are uh, hikokumori, which is basically, I think, shut-ins, and they wake up and the mirrors in their rooms have all changed into um, this castle land. So I think it's like, shed in life in Japan slash Alice in Wonderland. I'm very intrigued and I really want to read it. I've wanted to read it for so long and when I saw that a distant library had it, I was like, please come to me. So yeah, I've been waiting for this to come for like five weeks and it finally came here and I was like, oh my god, I can't wait to read it in August. Um, and then the last women, woman in translation um, is Apple and Knife by Intan Paramaditha who is an Indonesian writer, um, and this was translated from Indonesian by Stephen J. Epstein. Um, and I've wanted to read this forever. Honestly, the cover just got me, and I've wanted to read it, like, for so long. Um, this is uh, fairy tales and gothic ghost stories with femi feminist and political issues. 
Um, so again, it's a short story collection. It's not super highly rated, but I want to give it a chance because sometimes weird books that I love, people don't gel with and they get low ratings, but like I personally love it. So I really want to read this so, so bad. And I don't think I've ever finished anything from Indonesia. I tried to read Man Tiger by Eka, Eka Kurunawa, I think, and it did not go well for me. That was a DNF. So I'm looking out for more Indonesian literature and I really want to read this. Okay, and we are to the last book on my August TBR. This is not a translation, but by a woman. This is How I Became a Tree by Sumana Roy, who is an Indian writer, who I believe wrote this in English, but she is Indian and lives in India. So great for her, like mad props to speak two languages fully enough that you can write in not your native language. Um, but this is a net gallery arc I saw and I just like couldn't get it out of my head. So I decided to give it a go. Um, this is a memoir about how Sumana Roy was tired of living in a world that's so fast. Um, and so she writes about how she reconnected and slowed down through her love of plants and trees. Um, and it's an ode to all that is unnoticed, ill, neglected, yet resilient. So it's a stunning meditation on trees, forests, plant life, time, self, agency, um, and more in a very relaxed rhythm. So it just really got my attention. I'm not a huge fan of like most memoirs or most nonfiction. Um, I tend to not be that interested, but this one in particular got my attention because as an anxious person, I'm always trying to like calm down, yoga, baths, tea, you know, hot chocolate, but something that you might not know is that I also do love plants. So I will just give you, you've never seen it, I don't think, but in my library room, I have a lot of plants. So these are all the plants on, oh, this is also where we keep our board games, but there's all these plants here. And then going this way, there's the two big mamas, one that goes down and one that goes across. And then over here, we also have these three. <laughs> and then here we, on the windowsill, we have my little tiny ones that used to be the big ones and now they have gone off for a life of their own. And those, that's only in my library room. So um, yeah, we have a lot of plants around and I'm really interested I'm not like a huge like, I don't know a lot about plants, but I, they just make me happy and I like having them around and watering them, etc. So um, yeah, now that I added myself as a weird plant person, <laughs> definitely let me know down below if you also really like plants because I find them very calming. So yeah, I'm very interested in that book, How I Became a Tree um, by an Indian writer. And that finishes up my August TBR. I am so thrilled to read all of these books in August. Um, I think so many of them sound weird or odd or charming in their own unique way. And I'm really excited to read more translations from all around the world. So if you are also reading for Women in Translation Month, please let me know some of the ones that you are looking forward to down below. And I will chat to you in the comments or in my next video. Lots of love. Bye. <laughs>